Hi, my name is Nick, and I'm with the Wilson Group at Cornell University. Today we'll be discussing radioactivity by showing three demonstrations, radioactivity in common objects, the visualization of radioactivity, and the application of radioactivity in nuclear medicine. What do you think about when you hear the word radioactive or nuclear radiation? If you have watched a lot of action movies like me, you might think about these things as frightening and dangerous. Although there are certainly some scary ways that radiation and radioactive materials have been applied, it turns out that these are also natural phenomena that can be found in nature, and there are beneficial applications of it as well. In this demonstration, we will give a few examples of the natural occurrences of radioactivity and how it can be applied for beneficial applications in society. First, what is radioactivity? In a general sense, radioactivity is the emission of small microscopic particles from the center of the atom called the nucleus. These small particles are invisible to the naked eye, but still interact with matter, including you and me. One reason why we often hear scary things about radioactivity and radiation is that if these radioactive particles have a very high energy, they can cause damage to our cells and DNA if we're not careful. So, what causes something to be radioactive in the first place? As we mentioned, radioactive particles are emitted from the central nucleus of the atom. As you may recall, the atomic nucleus contains two types of particles, positively charged protons and neutral neutrons. It turns out that the ratio of protons and neutrons within a nucleus will dictate whether it is radioactive or not. For example, if there are too many protons, the nucleus will be unstable in part because of all of the, these positive charges mixed together. When a nucleus is unstable like this, it emits a radioactive particle in order to change the ratio of protons and neutrons until it becomes stable. If these radioactive particles are so small and invisible to the naked eye, how do we know they exist and how can we detect them? As we mentioned before, the high energy of these particles can potentially damage our cells and DNA. So in order to detect them, we need to use something that can stimulate that type of damage. Commonly used detector is a geiger muller counter. In the detector head, damage caused by radioactive particles is sensed. A gas is present in the detector head, and when a radioactive particle hits the gas, its energy is transferred, causing it to eject an electron from the gas and generate an electric current which the Geiger counter then registers as a clicking noise. An increase in noise from the detector signals that radioactivity is present in the sample. These yellow disks are made of man-made radioactive materials that we can detect with our Geiger counter. The beeps here indicate that this is a radioactive source. But as we mentioned earlier, not all radioactivity is man-made. In fact, most radioactive materials that you will encounter are natural. As an example, here is a normal looking rock. As you can see with the Geiger counter, this rock is radioactive. Why is it radioactive? It contains the naturally occurring element called uranium. Uranium is always radioactive, and it is actually a more abundant than things like gold and silver. There are several regions in the United States and world where there is a lot of uranium present in the ground. So not all rocks are radioactive, but rocks like this one that contain uranium are. These naturally occurring radioactive elements have been used in a number of applications. Have you ever been camping and used a camping lantern? The lantern mantle ignites in a very bright glow to make sure that you can see your way around the campsite at night. To achieve that bright glow, people have used the element called thorium. Like uranium, thorium is a naturally occurring element that is highly abundant, but is also radioactive. As you can see, this lantern mantle is also radioactive. Another example of using radioactive materials is probably right above you, a smoke detector. A large portion of smoke detectors in use contain a radioactive element called americium. The radioactivity of the americium is critical to the function of the smoke detector. Without the radioactive americium, your smoke detector would not be able to detect smoke. Hence, these are examples of how radioactive materials are used to save lives every year. Here's another example. Is my food radioactive? Oh no, it's actually the plate. Okay, are all plates radioactive? No, in this case, the plate is from the 1950s. As you can see, it has a very nice bright orange color. The bright orange color comes from a uranium-containing compound, which makes it radioactive. In more recent years, due to the recognition of the possible health concerns about ingesting radioactive materials, this type of orange dye is not used anymore for this reason. As you can see, radioactivity is all around us in the objects we use and see every day. It has practical and cosmetic uses. Is all radiation the same? 
In the previous example, we saw several different radioactive objects. It turns out that there are different types of radioactive particles that can be emitted from radioactive materials. These radioactive particles are called alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays, and they all have different properties. Alpha particles are the most massive type of radioactive emission. These alpha particles have the same properties of a helium nucleus. Because these particles are so large, they interact strongly with all matter and can be stopped quite easily. Even a thin piece of paper can block them. Another type of radioactive emission is a beta particle. Beta particles have the same mass and charge as an electron, and as such are significantly smaller than alpha particles. Because of their smaller size, beta particles can move through matter a bit easier than alpha particles. Thicker materials, like aluminum and plastic, can still efficiently block them. The third type of radioactive emission is a gamma ray. A gamma ray is basically a particle of light. However, it is significantly higher in energy than the light we observe and detect with our eyes. Because of its high energy, these gamma rays can travel very far through matter. As you can see, it takes very heavy metals like lead to effectively block this type of radiation. So far, we have shown that radioactivity is a natural phenomenon, and it has different properties depending on what type it is. We have also shown how it can be applied for useful applications like smoke detectors. Another very important application of the use of radioactive materials is in the field of nuclear medicine. Nuclear medicine is essentially a type of medical treatment that involves administering radioactive materials to patients. Essentially, it involves the use of a radioactive drug. As we demonstrated above, Gamma rays are not easily blocked by ma matter. As such, the gamma rays of these radioactive drugs can be detected from within the patients quite easily. These gamma rays go to a detector and can be transformed into images that show what is going on internally in the patient. These images are helpful for doctors to diagnose and treat diseases, including cancer. There are two types of imaging. The first is called single photon emission computed tomography or SPECT imaging, where a gamma isotope is delivered to the patient. The gamma rays emitted by the isotope can be detected by a gamma camera and transformed into images by computers. The second imaging technique is called a PET scan, not because you're imaging your pet. PET stands for positron emission tomography because it uses a positron emitting source. The positrons emitted by the source collide with electrons in the surrounding matter, resulting in a release of energy that can be sensed by a detector and transformed into images. Here we have a patient who might have tumors inside her body. Because cancer can be located anywhere in the body, we have put radioactive sources inside her and the sources will only bind to tumors in the body. Now we can use a Geiger counter to figure out where the tumor is located. The Geiger counter indicates that a patient has a brain tumor. Although this is a simple example of how these radioactive medicines can be used to detect disease, sophisticated imaging equipment available at hospitals can produce very detailed images. Here are some examples. The picture on the left is an image of a heart obtained by SPECT imaging after a patient has been given a radioactive drug. From this image, the doctors can tell if the heart is functioning normally. The picture on the right includes an image of a brain obtained by a PET scan. As you can see in the picture, this PET scan can be used to detect mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease. As we have shown in these demonstrations, radioactivity is a natural phenomenon that has been used for important applications in society. To summarize the main points, Radioactivity occurs when a nucleus is unstable because of an incorrect ratio of protons and neutrons. Radioactivity is natural and found in deposits of uranium, 
an element that is much more naturally abundant than things like gold or silver. There are three main types of radioactive emissions, alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. We can use Geiger counters and other instruments to detect radioactivity. Radioactivity is a crucial part of nuclear medicine to find various diseases and conditions using SPECT and PET imaging. Despite the general fright and concerns around radioactive materials, nuclear medicine has undoubtedly saved many lives through its implementation.